Thanks for talking to us, Farhan. It's Wednesday, five days after the big news. Why are you here and why are we talking now? Well, I think the club has to say something about this. It has to say it for ourselves, for our stakeholders, for the fans, and for the whole Manchester City family around the world. However, we have to be careful. We have to be respectful, as we have been, of this process. And the process continues. I wish I could say more. I wish I could have been speaking five minutes after this was announced. But I did have to take legal advice of what can and cannot be shared. But I do hope that I will be able to share enough to understand where we are and where we're going. And City have been found guilty in the financial fair play chamber of financial wrongdoing and non-cooperation. How do you answer those two charges? The most important thing I have to say today is that the allegations are not true. They're simply not true. And in terms of the owner putting his own money into the football club via sponsorships? The owner has not put money in this club that has not been de properly declared. We are a sustainable football club. We are profitable. We don't have debt. Our accounts have been scrutinized many times by auditors, by regulators, by investors, and this is perfectly clear. And in terms of the non-cooperation, what didn't we cooperate with? Well, we did cooperate with this process. We delivered a long list of documents and support that we believe is irrefutable evidence that the claims are not true. And it was hard because we did this in the context of information being leaked to the media, in the context of feeling that at every step of the way, every engagement we had, we felt that we were considered guilty before anything was even discussed. But at the end, you know, this is an internal process that has been initiated and then prosecuted and then judged by this uh, FFP chamber at, at UEFA. The club was very aggressive in its statement, calling it a, a prejudice process when we posted it on Friday, and that was kind of a, a new tone for us. Why was that? Well, this was our experience. This is the way we felt all the way through this process. Of course, a lot of people come now and say, what were you expecting? This is the way it works. You should have expected a negative outcome, the way the system is designed. But we, we didn't believe that. We work very hard. We provided all kind of evidence, but at the end, this FFP investigatory chamber relied uh, more on out-of-context stolen emails than all the other evidence that we provided on what actually happened. And I think it's normal that we feel like we feel, ultimately, based on our experience and our perception. This seems to be less about justice and more about politics. So now we go to CAF, and the club has been there once already. Now we're going again. What's the difference? Well, this is how the system works. We went to CAS in the middle of the process because it was clear to us that we were not having a fair process, and we were concerned. We were specifically concerned about the leaks, the constant, constant leak of information. And CAS said there was merit in our complaint, they said that the leaks were worrisome and they said they will judge it when the process is finished. So the process is finished now, we're going to CAS again. This seems to be going on and on. What's the time scale here? What are we looking at? We're looking for an early resolution. Obviously, through a thorough process and a fair process, but my best hope is that this will be finished uh, before the beginning of the summer. And until then, for us, is business as usual. It's fair to say, Fran, that this is probably amongst one of the most frustrating and negative experiences the club has gone through. Is that a fair thing to say? The, the, the experience with this FFP investigatory chamber has been negative for us, more than what I would have imagined. But this is not UEFA. We're not talking about the whole of UEFA, which is a, an association of associations. I personally know many people that work at UEFA very hard for the benefit of UEFA, but also for the benefit of the clubs of UEFA, like ours, and for the benefit of football. 
if the negative experience that we had and the way this process went is negative, is negative also for them. UEFA is much bigger than this FFP chamber. So from what's next, what, what are you looking for? All we're looking for is a proper adjudication in an independent and impartial body that's going to take the time to look at all the evidence and look at this without preconception. I'm also looking for the end of this process to maybe also put an end on this undertone that we're hearing all the time, that anything that we do, any result that we get is based only on money and not on talent or effort. You know, the hundreds of people that work in this club know this is not true, that it is about effort and talent. So maybe at the end, this is an opportunity. So you've spoken to, to Pep, what's his situation? Well, obviously Pep has been kept informed about this process, but this is not something for him to respond to. He is focused on the football, he is focusing on the game, the game at hand, the game today, the game tomorrow, and the next uh, weeks, as well as the players, the calm and the focus. And this matter is more a business and a legal matter than a football matter. Fran, this has been tough on, on you, on everyone in the organisation, but it's been tough for the fans too. Before we wrap up this chat, have you got a message for them? The fans can be sure of, of two things. The first one is the allegations are false. And the second is that we will do everything that can be done to prove so. We know the fans are supporting us. We can feel it. Manchester City fans have gone through challenges for decades. This is just another challenge. We'll stick together, we'll go through it, and we will not let the club or the fans down.